All right, and welcome to episode eight of my What Is Hitman Roulette series. Today, we're talking about Miami, and holy shit, this map is, it's just got, it's got a lot of stuff. All right, it has a lot of stuff in it. And uh, it's a cool map, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy Miami to some extent. But, ah, you know, I just kind of feel like on some level Miami's missing something. I feel like this is a map that could easily house three or four targets, but we only get two. And for that reason, I kind of have been ignoring Miami for the better part of since Hitman 2 has come out, really. I know a lot of people are really big fans of Miami. I know it's a super popular map in the community. I know that a lot of people have a lot of knowledge about this map, but I am definitely not one of them. I enjoy it to some extent, but as far as the Hitman 2 maps go, this is near the bottom of the barrel for me. I just feel like this map could have given us more in terms of, well, specifically with targets. I feel like if this map had a third target, I would really enjoy it, uh, because it easily could. I mean, it's huge. The map is ridiculously huge. And the amount of NPCs on this map, I think, are only outshined by Mumbai. Mumbai is the only other map in the game that has even close to this many NPCs. Like, this frickin' map has like 200 and something NPCs. Despite there only being two targets in the map, they're interesting enough. And there are some pretty cool isolations involved with them. And I do have to mention real quick that this map has the most amount of disguises over the entire trilogy. Miami has a total of 29 disguises, not counting the suit, which is, take that in your pipe and suck a dick, Sapienza, that is ridiculous. It's got even more disguises than Sapienza. We covered 25 disguises total with Sapienza, Miami has 29. So, there's a lot to cover here, and I had to reach out to the community to get information on strats that are going to be coming up pretty quick, especially for the disguise grabs. So, this video definitely is not all my information. This video is a mixture of my information combined with people that I've talked to in the community. I need to mention some names here. I want to give a thank you to Pijiro, Chrome X, Ducker, and Meme Junkie for being a part of the information gathering process for me and giving me some pointers on how to get certain disguises and whatnot. So, to them, big thank you and uh, much appreciated. Anyways, I guess we should head on into the starting locations, and then we'll go into the target isolations, because there are a lot of things to talk about, and uh, the disguises are going to take quite a while. So, go get stoned, have a beer, kick back, enjoy the show, and uh, buckle in, because this one's going to be a little bit of a long one. So, without further ado, let's do the starting locations. Now, Miami's back to being, you know, badass again, like all the other maps we talked about, with all the starting locations that are viable. Miami has the same thing going for it in that sense. All the starting locations are viable in some form or another. The waiter starting location may be the most powerful one. There's also the dolphin start location is really good. Sometimes the default start location is great. But really, every starting location serves a purpose depending on the spin. It really is all centered around what the spin may be. The starting locations that I tend to use the least, or I seem to use the least, at least when I'm practicing spins, would be probably the Medic Start and maybe Race Marshal. Although I've seen those come up in tournaments multiple times and they are quite viable and they do provide some good advantage, again, depending on what the spin happens to be. So it's really all up to you. Use your better judgment. Practice starting from different locations on this one because there's a lot to learn with this map. There are a lot of traversal areas that are very confusing to remember. Even for a guy like me who's been playing this map for three and a half years now, or three years or whatever, however long this map's been out, three years, I still get confused and lost sometimes in Miami. Because I was never a big fan of ghost mode, so I never played ghost mode, so I never learned the layout of Miami as quickly as a lot of players did who did play ghost mode back in the day. Anyways, that being said, like I said, all starting locations are viable, and it's up to you how you want to do it. So I'm going to go over each and every method now to isolate Sierra Knox, starting with the race marshal isolation, where you disqualify Moses Lee. To go about doing this method, all you need is a race marshal disguise. Any one of them will do. You need to get up onto one of these podiums here, 
preferably from the podium start when you start as event crew. You just KO any NPCs that are on top of this podium, and you grab the flag, and once the prompts are visible on screen for you, that's when you're able to wave the flag and disqualify whoever it is that you choose. This isolation is only really good if you want to go for the consumed poison kill on Sierra Nox using the trophy. There are faster methods to do the consumed poison for Sierra, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one for that specific kill really at all. Uh, it does take quite a while, because once you shut down the race, Sierra takes a total of seven minutes to go from the time where you shut down the race as the race marshal, where you press the button to disqualify whoever it is you disqualify, up until the part where she's at the podium and takes a drink of the trophy and actually dies. That whole process takes around seven minutes. So you're going to be waiting quite a while. Now, of course, you can get a lot done in seven minutes, but it's really all up to you how you want to go about doing this, how hard the, the Robert Knox kill may be could be a factor in whether or not you want to do this isolation for Sierra. There really isn't much of an isolation here going on, as this method is really only viable and only good for the consumed poison kill. So if it's not consumed poison in the spin, don't even bother with the race marshal isolation because to be honest, the race marshal isolation is bottom tier in terms of Sierra Knox. Next, we've got race marshal isolation, but this time you're disqualifying Sierra Knox. She's gonna get pissed and wander about the map. She's gonna eventually head into the Kronstadt paddock. And when she gets up to the paddock there, there's gonna be two Kronstadt security guards that are gonna be hanging out in there. You can go into the paddock and immediately knock out both of these guards here and deal with them. There's even a closet you can put them in. And then once Sierra gets up here, it's just her and her girlfriend hanging out. And they're both very easily dealt with. You just KO them both, but at the same time, it's like, why would you bother doing that when there are much better strats to go about isolating Sierra? I would not recommend race marshal. Uh, the community has developed and come across better strats in order to do so. But I thought I should show these off just in case people want to try something new. Maybe you guys haven't tried this before. So here you go. Race Marshal is there. The next and most viable method for Sierra is by far the sugar. You can start waiter and there's a sugar right next to you. You need to grab these pouches of sugar. And there's also sugar all over the map, really. There's a sugar in the kitchen. There's sugar down where you can get the waiter disguise, which we'll talk about later. All you need to do is grab one packet of sugar, and you're going to proceed into the Kronstadt garage. Once you're in the garage, you're going to do a throw distraction in this spot here. A Kronstadt mechanic is going to come around the corner. You're going to need to KO him, take his outfit, throw them into the box, and then run over to the engine thing, whatever the hell it is over here. This is the engine supply hose. I don't know what the fuck this thing is. I'm not a race car mechanic, so I couldn't tell you to save my life, but basically what it is is you're putting sugar into this thing, which will then put the sugar into the engine of Sierra's car in this unskippable cutscene, and once she's out of the car, she's going to get pissed. She's going to start walking away, and at that point, you can go change back into your waiter disguise or whatever disguise you had, as long as it's trespassing. And you can peekaboo her through this door like this. This is a very common strategy. Almost everybody in the community uses this. The sugar is probably the most viable strat to get Sierra dealt with. You can isolate her in this room, or you can do a live kill here, whatever it is you need. Just make sure you're in the appropriate disguise. And then even if you need to, you can box her right after. So, great strat, super easy, super quick, and definitely the most common used, especially in tournaments. Next up, we have my personal favorite isolation for Sierra, which is the dongle. There's an NPC on the map named Max Verhote, and he has the dongle on him. Unfortunately, he's behind a locked door. So all you need here is a crowbar and something to throw to distract this NPC here once you get up at this spot. On your way into the lounge, up these stairs from the VIP entrance area, Area. You're going to cause a distraction for this journalist here and go through this door. Once you've opened the door, you need to throw distraction for the event security guy here in Maxwell, and then you're going to need to KO them both. Nobody else comes into the room, but make sure you do do a throwing distraction or a gunshot distraction or something for that journalist chick outside because she will come in and investigate once she hears the crowbar open this door. Grab the key or the USB drive off of Maxwell once he's unconscious, and then you need to traverse through this area here. Go into the security room, and there's a laptop on the table here. Put the dongle into the laptop, and then access the laptop again in order to stop the race. At that point, you just head down to the Kronstadt garage via this pipe here, and now whatever disguise you're in, you can just try to peekaboo Sierra like you did with the sugar strat. Or, if you have a different type of spin, like Sierra Fire, for example, this is extremely viable because what you can do here is take your snail, throw it between these two laptops here, and it'll drop right in the middle of this 
big room full of NPCs. It'll KO every single one of them, and then you just need to KO Sierra once she comes through the garage doors. The Dongle Strat is easily the most viable, I would say, because of this little snail detail for fire kills, and actually it's pretty damn good for Sierra falling object as well, as you need to drag her body into this side room and drop the car on her for that kill. So, if those two kills come up in a spin, I'm going for Dongle 99% of the time, but you can do Sugar just as well. It really depends on what you're into. Next up we have the mascot lure. Mascot lure is done quite simply. You go down to where the mascot is, near the stairwell that's just behind where the food vendors are at the marina start. You see this guy here, you're gonna KO him and take his outfit. Right in front of you there's gonna be an injured NPC on the ground with a woman talking to him. The woman's gonna be dressed in a medic outfit and there's gonna be a set of keys on the ground. You're gonna grab those keys, and those keys are for his van. This guy's van contains documents that you'll need for Sierra Knox to get lured over into the area. So, what you're gonna do is grab those documents, head back past the injured NPC, and go up through this walkway here, up these stairs into the red carpet zone, and take a left. Right where this Kronstadt security guy is, you're gonna have a conversation with him, and once he's finished talking to you, he's gonna summon Sierra over here, and in that time, you need to get a different disguise, preferably a trespassing disguise, because you're gonna need to peekaboo him. Get the trespassing disguise ready for the peekaboo, but you do need to stay in mascot disguise for this lure to work. Wait until she's all the way over into the area and waiting for you, and at that point, you can switch into the trespassing disguise, peekaboo her over towards you, and open this locked cage door with a crowbar. The reason this lure is viable at all is in case Sierra Fall ever comes into play, this is probably the most viable way to go about it. It's not the fastest lure by a long shot, but it definitely works. And since Sierra Fall is a legal spin, and otherwise a nightmare if you were to do it any other way besides this lure, this is the most viable way to do it, and I would recommend it 100% of the way. Knock Sierra out, drag her body over to this hole over here, and dump her in the drink. And the final method for Sierra is the sniper rifle method. Sniper rifle is the only kill where you're allowed to kill her while she's still racing on the track inside of her vehicle. You're gonna get up to this walkway here with the single race marshal looking over the side. You can just line up your shot and you're gonna need to practice this one because this shot for Sierra is a little bit tricky as she is a moving object, especially if the sniper rifle you're using happens to not have slowdown time ability. It doesn't matter if the sniper rifle is loud or silenced. If sniper rifle comes up at all in a spin, for Sierra, just go with this method 100% of the time. It's by far the fastest, and it's the only Sierra kill in the map that actually allows you to keep her inside of the car, so take advantage of that. Robert Knox only really has two mainstream viable options for competitive play, and I'm gonna show them off right now. The first one being the obvious laptop lure. From anywhere on the same walkway that you shot Sierra with with the sniper rifle, you can just shoot this laptop out here, and that'll bring Robbie over here slowly but surely. Wherever he is on the map, he will head over to this spot right here. In this file room, you can knock out his Kronstadt security guard behind him, and then just take him out at any point. You can leave him in here indefinitely, as long as you don't make any crazy noise, and this is definitely the most viable way to go about killing Robbie about 90% of the time. There is one other viable method for him, though. If you tinker with the race car by screwing around with it with a screwdriver, like I'm doing here on screen, Robbie is going to eventually come down these stairs here. He's going to be in a bit of a panic, and he's going to be on the way down to the aquarium. Stay in the aquarium and just aim your pistol at the stairs here, and wait until you see him with your instinct coming down these sets of stairs. Then you're going to need to target lock down him by shooting a couple times, and he's going to run into this room with the aquarium. Remember that there are two roaming event security guards that are in the aquarium with you here, so be sure to take them out and hide their bodies so that you don't get spotted by Robbie when he enters this room. The reason this isolation is really good is because once you take out the event security guards, you have nothing to worry about, and this is a top-tier isolation for Robbie if you need to do a falling object kill on him. Falling object is maybe the most difficult kill for Robert Knox, although with this method it's a breeze. Once you get him in here, you can take out his guard, move the guard out of the way so that you don't kill him as well, and then you can just shoot the shark down on Robbie and away you go. Either way, you can use this isolation for any kill if you need to, except for maybe loud ballistics as other guards in the vicinity will hear you. Alright, like I said, we got 29 disguises to go over, so I'm just going to be firing these bitches out quick and steady. Let's do this. Alright, for the Aeon driver, simple. Fart bomb in a box in the driver's lounge. Nothing to it. Either that, or walk up to him in a guard disguise and plant in a medic device right beside him and detonate that. Follow him to the bathroom, KO his bitch ass, and boom! Get the disguise, GTFO the fuck out of there. 
nothing to it. For the Aeon mechanic, head down to the Aeon garage. In order of left to right, as far as the Konstadt garage goes, it goes Konstadt garage into Kaun garage into Aeon garage into Thwack into Sotoranio. So keep that in mind. Get to the Aeon garage. There's only one Aeon mechanic in there. I'd recommend tranking him just in case, but you can probably KO him here and just leave him here. No one's going to find the body. Take the outfit and get out of there. You're good to go. The Blue Sea Driver is a little bit more complicated, but it's pretty cool. This is a strat here from Ducker. Uh, all you need to do for this one is get in front of where the Blue Sea Driver is sitting, right in this area right here, right by this car, this show car. You're going to take a throwing object. As long as the event security guy is not in the vicinity, he needs to be off to the side a little bit. If he's off to the side, you can take this throwing item here and throw it behind this desk, right in this spot. That way, the NPC there, the chick NPC, will walk over to investigate that. As soon as the blue sea driver turns his back, trank him, and then crouch behind the desk that he was sitting at. Take his disguise, and as long as no NPCs are looking at you, none of the real ones anyways, you should be able to grab the disguise without getting spotted. It's a pretty tricky strat, but once you practice it, you'll nail it nonstop. And again, thank you very much to Ducker for showcasing this strat. The easy strat and the slow way to do it for the uh, Blue Seed Driver is... There's a door behind him in the common area, just on the other side of where he's sitting. You can crack this thing open with a crowbar. He's going to hear the sound. He's going to walk all the way over and investigate the door. All you need for this strat is a crowbar, because you can knock him out right here with the crowbar. Take his disguise, leave his body here indefinitely. No one's ever going to find him. And uh, you don't really need any resources for this one, so uh, if you don't have a Trank, or if you're not good at the other strat, then this is definitely the way to go. The crashed Kronstadt driver is in the Medic tent. All you need to do here is KO the Medic and then KO the crashed Kronstadt driver right in front of him and take the uh, outfit and yeah, that's it. There's all there is to it. Both of these bodies never get found. Nobody comes to this area as long as you don't bring Sierra in here. And uh, you can leave him here indefinitely. You don't have to box them, but you can if you like. Event crew is pretty simple. There is a free disguise in the area that's downstairs in the parking garage. Just off into one of these corridors here. This corridor is like a halfway mark between the parking garage itself and the walkway that leads up to the medic tent. There's a guy mopping the floors. You can choose to KO him and take his outfit, or you can grab the free event crew outfit that's just around the corner from where he's mopping. It's your call. I prefer to go for the free one just so there's no KO at NPCs I don't have to worry about later on down the road, but it is totally up to you. Event security, there are multiple ones to choose from. I'll be giving you a few examples here. From the Dolphin Fountain start, you can just trank this guy right here in front of everybody. Take the disguise and GTFO. No one should see you swap disguises. Downstairs in the parking garage, there is a fuse box on one of the walls over here, right by where the van is that you grab the documents from, where you uh, do the mascot lure. You can trigger the fuse box, the security guard is going to come walking out. You can knock him out with the trank. Don't just knock him out with anything here, because he will be found. And then uh, run up and grab his clothes. There's also a wandering event security guard just past the driver's lounge. He's wandering around where you do the dongle strat and where the bathrooms are. You can KO him out in the hallway, although that's not really recommended, because you can be easily ripped doing that. So I'd say do a throw distraction and bring him inside the bathroom, and then knock him out before the wandering journalist comes in to take a piss, take his clothes, and put him in the bathroom on the the left side because the journalist goes into the bathroom on the right side closest to the door and finally there is a free event security disguise beyond this door that's locked with a key card the door is just on the bottom of the stairs that are right behind the food vendors at the marina start florida man is an annoying bitch so i'd say definitely start marina if you see florida man in a spin if you're able to as soon as you start Marina, get up into this spot right here, right before you get onto the docks. Do a throwing distraction here for this event security that's just in front of you. As soon as you do that, run up behind Florida Man and just KO him as soon as he turns his back to you. Dump him in the box, switch outfits, and get the hell out of there. You don't have too much time to deal with this, so the best thing to do is just be quick. Otherwise, he can be a major pain in the ass to deal with a little bit later. Just make sure there are no NPCs watching you or anywhere in the vicinity, because there are wandering NPCs in the vicinity that can easily spot you if you're sloppy. For food vendor, there are multiple ones to choose from, but the easy ones I'd suggest are right behind where the marina start is. You can just trank any one of these food vendors here, duck down, and change disguises. Of course, you can always start food vendor as an option. The other option would be this food vendor on the other side right by where the blue seed driver is. You want the event security to be on the other side by the blue seed driver. 
You want to be very cautious about this shot here. Take a trank shot on this guy and swap outfits. Make sure there are no roaming real NPCs that can spot you while you're ducking down and swapping this disguise. And finally, if you grab the keys from the very top of the stands, right past where the race coordinators are, just above on the top level there, right around the corner, you can grab the keys on this shelf here, you can run down the stairs behind these race coordinators, and then you can open this door here and get inside to see a free food vendor disguise just sitting there for you. If you can afford the time, I would suggest getting the free disguise 9 times out of 10. It does take a little bit longer to get, but it's easily the safest way to go. The easiest journalist to get on the map, I'd say, is as soon as you start Dolphin Fountain, just run straight up to the male journalist at the bottom of the stairs here, take this trank shot, and then as soon as he passes out, the female journalist is going to be freaking out. Once she starts running off to the event security guard to let him know what happened, then you immediately switch disguises and get the fuck out of there. The other journalist that I can recommend is the one that's roaming around the driver's lounge area right by the bathrooms. He comes to take a piss. You can either lure him in here with a throwing distraction to get him in here a bit sooner, or you can wait for his cycle and as soon as he starts taking a piss, just KO him, leave him in the bathroom, swap disguises and get the hell out of there. There's no reason to hide him anywhere as no one else comes in the bathroom. For the kitchen staff, there's only one kitchen staff on the whole map, so it's a unique disguise. He's just in the kitchen that's just by the driver's lounge here. I'd say KO the waiter or use a throwing distraction to get the waiter out of the way. Trank the kitchen staff guy, swap disguises, and get the hell out of there. There's really nothing to this one. As I said, there's only one NPC on the map that is kitchen staff, and no one comes in the kitchen besides the waiter and the kitchen staff guy. So you can leave both the bodies here, neither one of them is going to be found. For the Kowoon driver, if you were to start waiter, you can just follow the Kowoon driver into this lounge area right here. He's going to isolate himself in this room, and then you can KO him at your own leisure. Alternatively, he's going to stand in this position here. Just later on, for example, if he was the second disguise you get, he'll be standing in this spot. At that point, you just want to do a throwing distraction, bring him in the room, shut the doors, KO him, box him, switch disguises, and get the fuck out. It's that simple. It's very easy disguise to get. For the Kowoon mechanic, well, there is uh, the option to start as the Cohen mechanic if it comes up in a spin. You can easily just go downstairs into the bathroom down here, right below where the driver garages are, and there's a free Cohen mechanic disguise to take at your own leisure. Nobody comes down here at all, so feel free to just grab this and get the hell out. It's much easier than KOing any NPCs, and it's basically the same difference in terms of distance. For the Kronstadt engineer, I would say the best way to go about this guy is take him from the marina side. Go on the marina side, say if you start marina or dolphin fountain. Go over to this guy talking to the event crew lady here. Do a throwing distraction over here by this box. The Kronstadt engineer is going to come check it out. You can just KO him by any means necessary, toss him in the box, swap disguises, and definitely pick up his keycard as it allows access to keycard locked doors throughout the map. The Kornstadt mechanic is quite simple. I already showcased it earlier in the video in order to get the sugar strat done for Sierra. So if you need the Kornstadt mechanic disguise, just go about the same method. Throw the distraction over in the Kornstadt garage. He's going to come investigate it, toss him in the box, change disguises, and get the hell out of there. For the Kornstadt researcher, I'd say start Kornstadt engineer for this one and then traverse through the Kornstadt building. You're going to keep walking along the pathway until you come across a couple of researchers through the wall with your instinct. These two guys in this room here. In the side room here, you can do a throwing distraction to lure one into the room, and then KO him or trank him here, take his outfit, and you can either box him into the next room, or you can leave him here. I'm pretty sure the body does get found, so I'd say if you're going to leave him here, just trank him. Otherwise, you can box him. Kornstadt security is uh, quite simple. Again, it's a guard disguise, so you have your pick of the litter. But the Kornstadt security guards that are guarding the camera box in the Kornstadt building, right where you would isolate uh, Robbie by the laptop there, are viable options. Or you can grab the guard disguise from Robbie's guard himself. That's probably the one that you're going to be going for most often, so I'd say just go with that and keep that in mind. Mascot, again, I already showcased how to get him earlier on in the video, but in case you missed that part and you just wanted to find out how to get him, you would start Marina or Dolphin Fountain. You would head on down through the back area of the marina, right where these stairs are, and go down to see this mascot right in front of you on the phone. At that point, you just KO him by any means necessary and grab the outfit. There is no reason to hide the body. There's no reason to trank him. His body will never be found. You're good to go. For the medic, there are three very viable options. I would say you can start as the medic, of course. You can always KO the medic that's in the medic tent by the crashed Kronstadt driver. Or, the best option, I would say, is grab the free medic disguise right around the corner of the medic tent, right past this door here. There's also a poison vial, 
and there is a poison needle just in the uh, cabinet right behind you that you can open with a key or a lockpick or a crowbar, whatever you need. So uh, nine times out of ten, you're going to be going for the free medic disguise. So definitely keep that in mind that that's there. Moses Lee is easily one of the trickier disguises to get on the map, as he is a unique disguise, and you do need to stop the race in order to get him. As soon as you stop the race, you can isolate Sierra, and then you still have enough time to just chill in the little waiting area that's right in between the Kronstadt garage and the Kawun garage. You're going to see with instinct that there's going to be a bunch of Kawun mechanic guys that are going to be celebrating and giving Moses Lee praise and all this stuff. Moses Lee is the guy wearing the cowboy hat. You can shoot out the camera that's right above this event security guard here. Then you close this door and you wait for the guys to come out from the Kawun garage. At that point, close the Kawun garage door after bumping into Moses Lee and drop a snail here. You're gonna end up KOing two Kaun mechanics, Moses Lee, and the event security guy, and no one else is gonna see this. No one is gonna see you swap disguises into Moses Lee. You're good to go. It's definitely the easiest way to go for Moses Lee, definitely the fastest way to go as well, but if you don't have the snail, you can just wait in the Kronstadt garage, chill here by the side door here, and then wait with a Seeker in hand. As soon as you see Moses approach the door, Seeker Moses and follow him downstairs. He's gonna isolate himself downstairs. You can KO him in this bathroom here, take his disguise, and you're free to go. The Pale Rider is a free disguise that nobody in the map wears. So it's just chilling on one of the benches in the bathroom downstairs where I just suggested you isolate Moses Lee with a Seeker shot. There's nothing to it. Go around the corner where the bench is on the very far end of the bathroom here, changing the disguise. No one's going to see you. You're good to go. It's free, and it's actually one of the better disguises on the map as it avoids all the super enforcers on the red carpet area as you're walking past all the garages. So it's really good for that. The race coordinator is on the Robert Knox side of the map. You can either get one of the two guys that are upstairs on the top of the stands area right above where the food vendors are located. They are past the locked door, so you're going to need a crowbar for that or a lockpick or etc. Trank one of them and then KO the other one with any means and you're good to go. Swap disguises and get the fuck out. Although there is another guy that's isolated by himself. He's just chilling where the podium start is in the back area. I would say start podium, knock him out, grab the disguise, and leave him here. You don't even need to hide the body. He isolates himself here already at the very start of the map. For the race marshal disguise, you can either get the ones that I described how to get early on in the video for the race marshal lures, or you can get any of the race marshals that are on the walkways, just chilling, observing the race over top of the track. The easiest one, I'd say, is the one that's right next to the laptop that you would isolate Robbie by. Take his disguise and get the fuck out. The Shake disguise is definitely the hardest disguise to get on the map. He's the most annoying, at least, if not the hardest. He's in the Thwack Paddock on the top floor, and you're only allowed to go up there in certain disguises. Waiter disguise being one of them, so I would highly suggest getting a waiter disguise first if you don't already have one. Going up with a fart bomb in a box, walking right next to him, and then getting him sick. This is the easiest and least stressful way to get him. I'll explain how to get the waiter disguise a bit later if you don't know how to already get it. But trust me, it's not worth the headache to try getting him any other way. He is such a pain in the dick. You just need to remember to avoid the waiter enforcer that's already upstairs with you. Follow the shake downstairs as he gets sick. He's going to go into the bathroom down there. You can KO him by any means and then change disguises. He's never going to be found in here. For the Sotoranio mechanic, there's nothing to this one. Go into the Sotoranio garage, cause a throwing distraction for any of the Sotoranio guys around, and the first mechanic to come over and inspect it, just trank that guy, grab his outfit, and get the fuck out. You gotta be kind of quick, because there is a roaming Sotoranio mechanic that's just off to the side, out where the public area is, so be careful and watch where he's gonna be at. But once you got this disguise, get the fuck out, and you're good to go. The street musician, there's nothing to it. Start at the default location, take a left down these stairs here into the underground tunnel, there's going to be pedestrians walking past you. Just ignore them. As soon as they pass you, hug the wall on the right. Trank this guy right in front of you. There's nothing to worry about. Don't even worry about him seeing you. His peripherals are trash. Grab his outfit and get the fuck out. For Ted Mendez, all it requires is a single trank as well. You just need to start Dolphin Fountain. As soon as you start, go right up to Ted, shoot him from behind, and grab his outfit immediately. You've only got about a couple of seconds to spare before the event security guy turns around and sees you changing disguises, but you've got more than enough time to worry about that, so... It's a very easy and practical disguise to get, nothing to it. The Thwack driver is just chilling halfway up the stairs near the VIP entrance, getting interviewed by a female journalist. You can start waiter and head right up to him immediately. Get all the way downstairs and hug this corner right here. You can choose to close the doors behind you, but it's optional. You can take your seeker out and seeker him right below the stairs. He's not going to see you shoot him, so don't worry. 
At that point, he's going to get sick, you're going to follow him to the bathroom, and you're going to KO him in here the same way you did the Aeon Driver earlier on in the video. For the Thwack Mechanic, you just go into the Thwack Garage, do a throwing distraction, or KO the nearest Thwack Mechanic that's available to you, change disguises, and you can choose to hide the body, although I don't think the body gets found here, so you should be good to go. There's nothing to this one either. Once it changes outfits, you're free to go. And finally, the waiter disguise. There are waiter NPCs you can KO on the map, but the best options to get the waiter disguise is to A, start as waiter, because it's probably the strongest starting point in the map, or B, you can go to the Kronstadt paddock. In the storage room right in the back, there's a free waiter disguise you can grab at your own leisure. It's super close to where you would put your agency pickup in this area. Like I said, I don't recommend KOing any NPCs, even though there's a very easy waiter around the corner that you could KO or trank. The free disguise of this one is definitely the most recommended. Holy fuck! Okay, we are done with the disguises. Holy! All right. Well, that was a lot of fun. Jesus, I'm gonna have to sleep for a week after that one. Uh, but that was uh, all the disguises for this map. Holy shit, I'm glad that we got all that covered. Finding all the disguises and learning how to get all of them uh, for me when I was doing this video and making the video, I gotta say, that was absolutely a blast. I really enjoyed myself. Again, like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of Miami, but when it comes to the disguise grabbing and learning how to do all that shit, man, that's a lot of fun. I enjoy the shit out of that. From now on, no map has even close to this amount of disguises, so I won't have to go over this again. And it won't be this long-winded again until, well, until another map like Miami comes into existence. So, as per tradition at this point, we're going to move on now to the demonstration spin, which is gonna be awesome. I'm excited to see what happens with this one, as I always am. Let's see what we get. All right, so for this spin, we've got Sierra must be killed with an SMG, which means silenced or loud, doesn't matter, dressed as the medic. And for Robbie, we got uh, Consume Poison Dressed as the Soranio Mechanic, so this is kind of cool, I like this. Um, I'm a big fan of this because I didn't demonstrate uh, how to do a Consume Poison Kill on Robbie, and it's probably one of the only, other, one of the only kill methods that uh, I didn't demonstrate that uh, you can do. So, I'm glad I get to do this and showcase how it's done. So, I'm opting to start as a Kronstadt engineer here, and I'm going to bring a cobber, a crowbar, uh, lethal pills, and an SMG, a silenced SMG. That should be good, and let's see how we do. All right. So, this is a pretty cool spin. I do like this. The consume poison thing for Robbie is what makes it. Uh, I'm deciding to start in the uh, Kronstadt uh, uh, as a Kronstadt engineer, anyways. Um, simply because of the poison thing. That's the only reason I'm starting here. Otherwise, <laughs> fuck, excuse my hiccups. I'm drunk as fuck. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not drunk. I'm, uh, I just ate. Um,. So I'm tossing a throwing item here, I'm doing- I'm getting the reser researcher the way we're supposed to. Uh, the researcher is important because I can't go upstairs to access the eye drops, which I'm gonna poison, uh, unless I'm dressed as a security or as a researcher. So, uh, I grab the researcher disguise here, and then I'm gonna go turn on the air conditioning, or turn it up anyways, right over here in this spot. And then on the opposite end of this room, is gonna be the eye drops in the bathroom over here. We're gonna poison these bitches. Uh, so Robbie's gonna uh, drink. He's gonna drink the eye drops with his eyeballs at about uh, 6.45, 6 minutes 45 seconds. So I know that from past experience with doing this kill, so I've got lots of time to set up shit. I can pretty much just dilly daddle, do whatever the fuck I want throughout the whole map. Nothing to worry about. This sh this spin should be a one and done. Uh, it's not too difficult, considering what's requested and, and or uh, not requested, fucking uh, required. Um, but uh, we end up getting a lot of disguises in this spin, just because of what uh, what all goes down. So now I'm gonna traverse over to the driver's lounge area, uh, the red carpet zone. And uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm going to get the Sotoranio disguise, but not just yet. I need that uh, by the 645 mark, so I've still got a lot of time. And I've still got a little bit of setup I still have to do. i got to get my SMG. i got to go grab uh, the 
sugar and all that stuff because I'm going to get the Sierra isolation down. Definitely sugar isolation for sure on this spin. Like I said, the, su the sugar isolation is going to be the one you're going to see the majority of the time when it comes to this map. Uh, it just covers all bases. So there's the sugar I need and here's the waiter disguise. I'm getting this just so I don't rip in this area because I'm trespassing as a Kolstad researcher here. Whereas, uh, as a waiter, I'm not. So, this is good. Um, at this point, I'm going to head into the uh, Kronstadt garage as soon as this Kronstadt bitch passes me. I think I'm going to do a bullet distraction here. Sometimes it's better off, you're better off just doing a bullet distraction here to, do, to get rid of this piece of shit. But he's got his back to me now, so we don't need to do that. We're good. I'm going to grab this key card for no reason. Uh, and, uh, yeah, let's get the mechanic now. Same method as always. No reason to change it up. You can also turn on the generator there. It does the same thing. Just remember to turn it off if you don't want to do a distraction throw. Hello? But, uh, I'm gonna set this guy up so I can take his outfit, but I'm not gonna get dressed just yet because I still need to transform into the all-powerful Sotoradio mechanic. The green bitch. So, uh, the incredible mechanic. Uh, Hulk. And so, uh, fuck, dude, I must be tired or some shit. That was a terrible joke. Uh, so, I'm gonna head on back down over to the Sotorado Mechanic, dude, at this point. Um, I think I'm doing pretty good, actually. I gotta say, I'm, uh, I've optimized this pretty, pretty decently, considering I was kind of just winging this one the whole time. So, uh, all I knew was the consume poison thing at the very beginning was what needed to be taken care of first and foremost because Robbie gets up to that area where the eye drops are at around 4.55 minutes. And if the eye drops aren't already, uh, or if the AC isn't already turned on by that time, then you miss your opportunity. So you don't really have all that much time. I accidentally get peekabooed here by the Sotoradio mechanic. Uh, that was totally by, like, not even planned. I did not intend for that guy to see me. I wanted to do a, a throw distraction. But this works just fine. I find a cool little corner. Managed to trank him without getting ripped. And I managed to switch disguises without getting ripped too. So, you know what? I'm just really fucking good at this fucking map, dude. That's all it is. I'm just really fucking good. Um, the piss off of this area are the goddamn super enforcers. The super enforcers are the uh, event security bitches that walk around and they enforce pretty much every single disguise in the map, except for, I think, uh, Pale Rider, Mascot, uh, Shake, uh, the suit, and I think that's it. I'm pretty sure that's it. Maybe, I'm not, I'm not sure about Medic. I'm pretty sure they enforce Medic, too, though. Uh, but anyways, we're heading back into the Kronstadt garage. Um, gonna grab our Kronstadt mechanic disguise and put the sugar in the shit. And put the fuel in her vehicle. And this Everyone bloody cutscene, man, I hate this fucking cutscene. This is the reason that the dongle is my favorite strat for Sierra, because fuck this cutscene, first of all. Second of all, um, it's unskippable, that sucks. Third, it uh, has the NPCs all scattered about in a really shitty way. It's, everybody goes inside and, and kind of just stands around. There's like two or three of them standing. Yeah, see, what look at that. Two or three of them standing around in random spots. It, they're not all neat and tidy in a big circle like they are if you do the dongle, which is why I prefer the dongle for stuff like fire and falling object. So, anyways, got our sort of radio mechanic to size back, doing the peekabo lure on peekabo lure on uh, Sierra. We're gonna knock her in the back of the head. <laughs> Fucking sick jokes today, man. And uh, don't kill her yet, because it still needs to get me the medic disguise. But hey, we's pushing the 645 mark right now. Don't get spotted by the cameras, because I do not want to shut those things off. Yeah, it takes too long. Well, I guess there's a camera box right above me in the security room upstairs. But still, it's no, I don't, I don't want to go up there. So he should be dying right now. Perfect. About the 640, 645 mark. Grab medic, the medic disguise. That was actually fucking beautiful. I got to say pretty damn slick. I probably could have cleaned this up a little bit, been a little bit faster with the Sierra kill, you know, uh, and all that stuff, but whatever. 
As a medic, you can actually take this ambulance as an exit, so this is a great exit here, but you can only take it as a medic. So, um, there you go. That's that. Really nice spin. Super well done. I gotta say, that was smooth as tits. Um, not sub-7, though, because I suck major ass at Miami. But whatever, whatever. I had a blast with that one. Really cool spin. I'm glad that I optimized it as well as I did. Uh, yeah. That was fun. Good shit. And that sums it up for my Miami video. Holy smoke. Again, a long one, but man, this was a blast to do. I really enjoyed the making of this video almost more than I enjoyed playing Miami. <laughs> I gotta say. But this series really is becoming a total blast. I mean, it was since the beginning, but I really do appreciate the feedback I'm getting. I do appreciate the comments and the likes and the shares and the subscriptions on YouTube and all that stuff. Uh, it's great to see that a lot of newcomers and rookies are getting a lot of help from it, and I've actually gotten some comments from some actual pro-level players that have said that they get help from these videos as well. So it doesn't just tailor to the newer audience, which is great. I'm super happy to know that. I'm very humbled to hear that. And I'm glad that this series seems to be a success to this far. So, thank you for watching. Thanks for enjoying. Please like, comment, subscribe, do all the good shit. I would really appreciate it. And uh, we will see you next time in one of my all-time favorite maps, Santa Fortuna. And until then, keep rocking out and keep gaming.